Hello friends, this video on P-Block Elements Part 20 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's talk about some of the uses of carbon. See, carbon is fiber is embedded with plastic materials to improve the strength. You see the tennis racket, these, these uh, fibers are the plastic fibers, but you embed the carbon in this to give it strength to it. And that's what it required, right? Because if it is very weak, with one shot it will break. You want this to be strong. Right? So carbon is used here in this, right? in the tennis racket, also it is used in the aircrafts, it is in the fishing rods. It is also used, the carbon in the form of graphite is used in the batteries. And also it is used for electrolysis in the industry. It is also used to make crucibles, as I told, right, graphite is very, uh, has very high melting point. It is resistant to heat. So it is uh, used in uh, crucibles. Also it is inert to dilute acids in alkalis. The told carbon doesn't react with alkali and acids. So it is used as crucibles, right? Since it is highly porous, the, the charcoal is used in absorbing poisonous gas. So if there's some poisonous gas somewhere, the charcoal is used to absorb that gas. And also it is used in water filters, right? And it's also used to, uh, in air conditioner actually, we can see the AC, right? They use the uh, charcoal there because it can control the bad smell. The carbon black is used uh, in the ink. It is also used in the ink. It is also used in the tires actually. The coke is also used in the metallurgy a lot. A lot used coke as a reducing agent because very cheap. And in the industry, you want to produce things cheaper rate. Coke is very cheaply available. So it is used as reducing agent in the metallurgy industry a lot. Diamond, if you see, it has shine, this precious stone. It is used in jewelry a lot. One carat is something about 200 milligrams. So these are the use of carbon. In fact, there are more uses of carbon, which we'll discuss in uh, hydrocarbon chapter. So there are two compounds of carbon actually we'll discuss. One is the carbon dioxide, the other is a carbon monoxide. So let's start with the carbon monoxide here. So carbon monoxide is nothing but a colorless, odorless, water insoluble gas. It's gas which is almost colorless, odorless, and insoluble. So if you see, right, carbon monoxide is CO. It doesn't form any complex structure, right? You can see the structure. And that's why it is gas. So the moment you think of gas, you can think of the structure, right? That's why you have to think. Every time you think of a compound, you think, why it is gas? Why it has high melting point? Why it has high ionization energy? Right? So if you think carbon monoxide, you see the structure is pretty simple. So it is gas. Correct? It is a very strong reducing agent. Why? Because Air, if you see, the carbon has an oxidation state of plus 2 in carbon monoxide. Carbon always want to have oxidation state of plus 4 because it's more stable. So carbon will always oxidize to plus 4. It will oxidize itself and it will reduce others. So it acts as a very strong reducing agent. Correct? Because carbon monoxide, carbon has oxidation state of plus 2, which is not very stable. Carbon wants to be in plus 4 oxidation state. So it always goes to plus 4 and becomes oxidized and thus it has a good reduced agent. So it reduces almost all the metal oxides other than alkaline, alkaline earth metal because they are more powerful reducing agents actually. So it's like a comparison of uh, sodium and uh, what do you call it? carbon. So carbon plus. So if you see sodium, if you compare sodium, so sodium has more tendency to become Na plus than carbon 2 to become carbon 4. So C2 becomes C4. Let me write it here. Sodium becomes Na plus and carbon plus 2 becomes C plus 4. This tendency is all the more. So sodium is a bigger, is a more stronger reducing agent than carbon. So you can't reduce uh, sodium with carbon, right? Because the sodium is more strong reducing agent, right? And also some of the alkaline earth metal, for example, aluminum. Aluminum is a, also has a higher tendency to form from Al to Al plus 3 than the tendency of carbon to form Ca plus 4 from Ca plus 2. So it can reduce most and is widely used. Why? Because it is very cheaply available. But they are stronger reducing agent than carbon. But they are costly. So in the industry, generally use carbon monoxide. We don't use sodium or aluminium. Why? Because it is very costly. But this is very cheap. Right? So this is also used for extraction of many uh, metal from the ores. For example, in this case, right? Carbon monoxide is used to oxidize. Uh, sorry, reduce this. So if in this case, this oxidation state is plus 3, where it is 0. So it got reduced. And if Fe2C3 is the ore of iron, from this we got iron. From here also, if you see zinc, 
was plus 2, it became 0, it got reduced, right, using carbon monoxide and you got J. So using this reducing property of carbon monoxide, it is also used for attraction of many metals from there also. Because as I told, right, these metals are, most of the metals are really reactive and they exist in the oxide form, this we have discussed when we discussed about the metals, right. And these metals has to be reduced to the metal form and the good and cheap reducing agent is carbon monoxide, right. And please note, carbon monoxide is highly poisonous. Carbon monoxide as such is not poisonous, it's a very simple compound actually, it's, it can do much, it can't do much. But it is highly poisonous, why? Because it has ability to form complex compound with hemoglobin. correct? So if you see the carbon monoxide such as such, it's very simple, right? So it's a very simple gas, only carbon and oxygen, that's all. But it is very poisonous, why? Because when it combined with hemoglobin, it forms a very complex compound. So the question is why carbon monoxide is complex? It's very simple, it looks very simple, right? Still it's very um, dangerous. It is because of this. When it mixes with hemoglobin, it forms a very complex compound. Correct? This is when a good example can be, for example, you have one spy and the spy looks very cute or very um, uh, small boy maybe. Is a spy in your gang. This guy looks very, very you know, innocent. But if this guy pass the information to let's suppose other group, it may break your group, right? Same thing. Carbon monoxide looks very small and cute, right? Very simple. But when it com combined with hemoglobin, it forms very dangerous compound. That's why it's harmful. And if you see the carbon monoxide structure, it has one sigma and two pi bond. That's where the structure is, right? One sigma and two pi. One sigma is the first bond, and two, the another two bond is the two pi bonds. And it has also lone pairs, right? It has lone pair, both carbon and oxygen. Now with this, it acts as a donor of lone pair. And thus it reacts with certain metals. And it forms metal carbonyls. So the reaction can be a right? For example, nickel, when reacts with carbon monoxide, you read this 335 Kelvin, you get nickel tetracarbonyl, CO. Iron also, you heat with carbon monoxide, you get pentacarbonyl iron. Correct? So, if you heat this uh, carbon monoxide with metals, because of the lone pairs, it forms carbonates. Correct? So, we have seen a lot of usage of carbon monoxide in the industry. The question is how to prepare it because it is useful, so let's prepare it, right? So the first option is you have this carbon, you heat with a limited supply of oxygen, it gives you carbon monoxide. It's a very simple process. It can also be prepared by dehydration of formic acid and this gives a pure carbon monoxide. If you want real pure carbon monoxide, you can have this formic acid, you can just dehydrate this with the sulfuric acid and you get carbon monoxide at 373 Kelvin. Or on the commercial sales, since this is costly, what you can do is you can have this uh, uh, coke, hot coke, you pass this with the steam, right? You have this coke, you pass with the steam and then you get CO and H2. This is water gas or seeing gas. We discussed what is in the last chapter, water gas or seeing gas. This is also used to prepare carbon monoxide, right? So instead of this, if you use air, if you use the air, then you have to use nitrogen also, right? There also you get carbon monoxide and nitrogen gas. This is called producer gas. This mixture is called producer gas. So there are various ways to prepare carbon monoxide. Let's talk about the next compound called carbon dioxide. Let's talk about another carbon compound, carbon dioxide. It is also colorless and odorless gas similar to uh, carbon monoxide. This has very low solubility in water and this is used in biochemical and geochemical important because low solubility in water. And this water, it forms carbonic acid. It's a very weak dibasic acid. Very weak dibasic acid. Since it is acidic in nature, it combines with alkaline to form metal carbonates. For example, if you see, when you react carbon dioxide with water, what you get is H2CO. Correct? So this is what it gives metal carbonates. And this is not poisonous, it is pretty okay. 
and this increase in carbon dioxide level may lead to increase in greenhouse effect which you must be uh, listening in the radio or newspapers or tv channels saying that the temperature of the earth is increasing because of the increase in carbon dioxide because we have a lot of factories and we are cutting down trees the carbon dioxide level is increasing and carbon dioxide traps sunlight and increases the heat right so with that the temperature of the whole earth is increasing and it's a very serious uh, issue because the glacier will melt and the glacier melts all this uh, coastal region will be in water so it's a very serious issue and that's why uh, everybody is trying to decrease the uh, concentration of carbon dioxide by planting more trees and uh, taking all the go green initiatives right and if you see in carbon dioxide the carbon goes through sp hybridization so if you see the shape of this right so you have something like this this is the shape and this is a hybrid uh, hybrid or you call hybridized shape of this okay the resonance shape of uh, carbon dioxide it exists in three form three resonance structure this is the resonance structure of carbon dioxide let's talk about the preparation of carbon dioxide since it is critical let's talk about the preparation it can easily be prepared by burning carbon with excess oxygen please note it has to be excess so carbon plus excess air will give you carbon dioxide or you have the methane also you heat in excess oxygen it will give you carbon dioxide in the lab you can take calcium carbonate and react with hydrochloric acid you will get pure carbon dioxide but on the commercial scale it is prepared by heating limestone so this is calcium carbonate you heat it you get carbon dioxide let's talk about the uses of carbon dioxide the first is it is used in the photosynthesis by plant and the plant use this to prepare their food you see this is carbon dioxide this is chlorophyll the presence of sunlight plant prepares food it is used as a dry ice in the refrigerator if you see in the refrigerator we have something called dry ice which is something which uh, is a critical component for uh, refrigerator and the, there we use carbon dioxide it is used in all soft drinks in soft drinks you see the bubbles here right we talked about this in the uh, equilibrium chapter we talked uh, that this carbon dioxide that is mixed to this uh, uh, liquid or coke and that's why you see this bubbles in soft drinks right so in soft drink also carbon dioxide is used it is used as a fire extinguisher also a lot and it is used in the preparation of urea thank you visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again